Hey guys, Dante here, and today we're going to take a look at something very cool. Tobin's Spirit Guide, the official spirit guide of the Ghostbusters. Now, before we go further into what this is, I gotta give you a little background on the Ghostbusters that some of you might not know. In the Ghostbusters series, starting with the original movie in the 80s, they referred to a book known as the Tobin Spirit Guide. It's never shown, but it's always referenced. It's kind of like the dictionary for ghosts. Whenever something pops up, oh, I'm going to go look in the Tobin Spirit Guide. Or whenever a spirit does something weird, that wasn't in the inside of the Tobin Spirit Guide. And it's constantly mentioned. It's mentioned throughout both the movies. But it doesn't stop there. The original movies were continued, more or less, in the 2000 and, I believe it's 2006? No, 2009. Ghostbuster video game. This actually continues more or less from the second movie taking place in the 90s. You also have the more recent comics I believe done by IDW which also continues the comic, uh, the movie franchise in comic form. So you have the movie, the video game, and the comic book from the movie as well. But if you grew up in the 80s or 90s and watch reruns you know about the real Ghostbuster cartoon which in itself was a kind of alternate universe. It did carry from the movies, but it had its own ongoing plots and style to it. That was actually continued in the 1988 comic book collection. You can tell the main difference because in the comic books and the cartoon, the characters have well, colorful costumes and different hairstyles and different hair colors, as opposed to the original movie where they all wore the same kind of beige jumpsuits. Now why am I mentioning all of this? Well, you have a movie, you have a comic adaptation, a video game continuation, you have a cartoon adaptation, a comic book adaptation based on the cartoon, yet all of it still comes together in the Tobin Spirit Guide. This book is written and presented as if it's an actual textbook. In fact, the cover piece right here even says, Written by Dr. Ray Stans, Dr. Egon Spangler, and some guy named Eric Burnham. Eric Burnham is, of course, the actual guy behind this, with illustration by Kyle Holtz. H, yeah, H O T Z Holtz, I believe, or Hotz. This is an awesome book, guys. If you like the Ghostbusters or in general just like fun artwork, this is the book you want to get. It is a literal guide of the spirits you would normally encounter in the Ghostbuster world. And I mean the entire world. It makes references to the cartoons, the toy line, everything you could think of. And it has beautiful illustrations all done on this really thick kind of parchment looking paper. It's uh, solid black and white illustrations. Great work here. The whole thing is broken down into chapters. The first chapter being a section of Ghost of New York. In this section, you have ever you have um, characters from the movie, such as the cab driver. He only shows up in one moment, but he's there. In the same section, you have characters like the Spider Woman, or rather, her name is the Spider Witch. She's from the video game, though, and it continues so on and so forth. Starting off with New York Ghost, and then from there continues into breaking down ghosts into different categories. Poltergeists, ghosts that possess objects, ghosts that are elementals. In short, this book kind of gives you an insight into the Ghostbuster world and is the branching point between all the different universes. And cool thing about this book, it has an intro written by Ray Stanza of New York, New York. The intro basically tells you that they made this for New Yorkers so they can understand what the Ghostbusters do. Primarily because the actual um, Tobin Spirit Guide is about 35 pounds in weight. So, we have a nice handheld version of it. I'm going to flip through it real quick and show you a few of my favorite parts. To kind of further illustrate why this is an important book to have for any collector. Let's see, where's a good spot to start off with? Ah! Possessed objects. It gives you a full description of what a possessed object is as opposed to a possessed individual. But what do they use for the illustration? That's right. 
It's the toilet toy. Now, I can't remember if this toy was ever in the cartoon, but I know most people had this particular toy. They make even references to characters from the 80s version, such as the Sandman, and my personal favorite, if I can find it right here, ah yes, the Boogeyman. Now, this book isn't just simple, hey this character's from this cartoon, this character's from this spot. It breaks it down a bit further. So the Boogeyman is described as, well, the Boogeyman. In the cartoon, they mention that there's many different types of Boogeyman, but they don't really go much into it. The book has a simple little description stating that there have been different boogeymen and even brings up characters of uh, German heritage. So like myths from German and Russian folklore are mentioned in here. And yes, everyone's favorite or maybe hated character Slimer, also known as the Green Ghost, is in here. An amazing piece of artwork that makes him just look creepy as heck. But it even gives you background stories as to what Slimer actually is. Something you never got in the cartoon or the movies. It actually says what they believe Slimer is and where he came from. I cannot recommend this book any further, people. If you like Ghostbusters, if you like graphic artwork, black and white, and just want to get a kind of idea of how you can add a um, stable and coherent storytelling to fiction, definitely get this book. It looks great on top of your shelf. You'll love the artwork, and it's a quick read. Since it's not, since it's pretty much broken down into into descriptions, you don't have to worry about a storyline. You read part of it, put it down, go back, pick up more, read more later. I can only give one criticism about the book. The book itself is about a quarter inch in thickness, which makes you think there's going to be a lot of details in it. But the truth is, most of that thickness is in part because of the quality of the paper. The paper is very thick to accommodate the heavy artwork and it gives you a feel and a weight that you are looking for in a physical copy of this book. When it comes down to it, the book itself is about 92, 92 pages. Personally, personally, I would have liked that the pages were thinner material just so we could get more and more stuff put into it. Even if it is just stuff about characters as opposed to full-on descriptions. But yeah, that's it. Tobin's Spirit Guide. And if you look at the cover, one last thing. You have to love that image in the cover. You can make up your own story. It is just artwork for the sake of artwork. Or you could say that the actual Tobin's Spirit Guide was the inspiration for the Ghostbusters logo. Go down to Barnes & Noble, go on Amazon, eBay, wherever. Pick up a copy, enjoy it, put it on the shelf. Because right now we have a big boom of Ghostbuster products, memorabilia, trying to jump on the bandwagon that is the new series. And if you don't like the new series, this right here will take you back to your childhood. And the good times you had with those four crazy Ghostbusters. Anyway guys, that's my opinion about this book. I say give it a look. Once again, I'm Dante. Like, favorite, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Later.